The Bank of Canada is desperate. The housing market in Canada is the last avenue for keeping up a fraudulent economy. Real estate has been the only factor allowing Canadians feeling as if everything is okay. Just use your home as an ATM. No worries. Reverse mortgages, second mortgages, home equity line of credit, no money down, tax rebates, and every other scheme to ensure you are heavily in debt and that prices remain high forever. We don't have an affordability problem because people need more assistance, more affordable housing. We have an affordability problem because prices have been kept artificially high. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we're going to look at the Canadian housing market. This is an issue that I believe is so critical. You have to understand what the Bank of Canada is doing today. I'm going to cover this issue, then we're going to talk about bail-ins and bail-outs. The history of that in the past few years in Canada, a lot of detail to get into today. I will only be covering this very quickly. I want to give it to you as concisely as I possibly can. And we're beginning with this article here out of the star. Bank of Canada expands the balance sheet list to mortgage bonds. The Bank of Canada plans to buy for the first time government-backed mortgage bonds in a bid to broaden the range of high-quality assets in its operation to manage its balance sheet. This is very interesting what they're doing here, and I believe it is critical for not just all Canadians to understand this, but for everybody around the world because you need to be following what each country is doing as well as all the other countries, always keeping an eye on what's happening. There's some more details in here very quickly. This is going to talk about what has occurred, the statement they made. I will show that to you and I give you the actual documentation so you can see it for yourself. A small portion of its purchases will be Canada mortgage bonds, which are guaranteed by the CMHC, that's Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corp. The Federal Crown Corporation has an issuance limit of $40 billion for 2018. Now, while that is significantly smaller than what we would see from the Federal Reserve, for example, we have to understand that this is a smaller economy, this is a smaller country than the United States. So it is fairly significant. Of course, it's not a major bailout to the likes of which we saw with TARP and other big bailouts that have occurred since the financial crisis, but it still is very important. Purchases of mortgage bonds will be conducted in the primary market starting later this year or early 2019. In terms of CMBs, Canada Mortgage Bonds, we need little more detail on how the BOC is going to do it. The banks want to know what they're doing exactly because the details are not concrete. So that's what the banks are saying today. Now, the Bank of Canada held $78 billion of Canadian government bonds and $22 billion of treasury bills for balance sheet management purposes, whatever that means, as of November. All right, so we're looking at a very small balance sheet in comparison to the Federal Reserve. But there's a reason, there's a reason why this is very significant and I'll show you more in a moment. This is directly from the Bank of Canada's website. I'll show you a few links from the Bank of Canada. Expansion of assets the Bank of Canada will acquire for balance sheet management purposes. All right, so once again, they're talking about this and they're suggesting that right now they're buying one type of garbage debt and now they want to be buying another type of garbage debt. I believe that this happens to be part of the mortgages because there are going to be individuals wanting to get out of mortgages, wanting to get out of this type of debt and they're going to do so because the prices are going to be falling the weakness is going to be very visible in the coming year so this is obviously going to have an impact on that as an asset and the worse it gets then of course that will cause turmoil that will cause a repeated effect a snowball effect and so the government is realizing that right now and they're stepping in it's not a direct bailout you know your mortgage is not going to be paid off by the government is not going to be nationalized, but they're doing so through the complex derivative too big to fail system that was in place for a long time since the 80s, essentially, when they started to really take hold in the financial system. We saw a major failure going on in the early 90s in Canada. The financial system was extremely vulnerable and the risk prevailed and you saw what happened in the coming years and what occurred. This, of course, 
course, will only become a big problem in the next year as we see housing prices start to head downward as they are. They have come down from their peak quite a bit. And of course, if the Bank of Canada decides to continue to increase interest rates, this is going to have a negative impact on the prices. There's no other way to put it. As part of the changes, the bank plans to allocate a small portion of its balance sheet for acquiring federal government guaranteed securities by purchasing Canada mortgage bonds. There's more details in here if you want to read it, but I went through it and essentially it's a lot of jargon, it's a lot of fluff, and they're not exactly clear on what they're doing except the fact that they're going to be buying these Canada mortgage bonds. Looking further into this, this is the statement directly from the Bank of Canada's website. According to this, primary market purchases of securities issued by federal crown corporations and guaranteed by the government of Canada. The bank may acquire securities issued by the federal crown corporations. They'll be guaranteed by the government of Canada. These purchases will be conducted in the primary market and will initially only include Canada mortgage bonds. There's a lot more detail in here but I'd like to cover one more issue before getting on to the next. The Canada Mortgage Bonds Program was created in 2001 by the CMHC as part of its mandate of facilitating access to more affordable and better quality housing for all Canadians. And this is the thing that we've been hearing a lot. We need to make housing more accessible to people. Instead of asking why housing is so expensive in the first place and what we can do to have prices come back down to reality instead we have something like the Canada mortgage bonds CMHC achieves this purpose by enhancing the supply of reliable funding for mortgage lending in Canada and enhancing the competitiveness of the Canadian mortgage market by providing a timely payment guarantee to investors on obligations issued through a special purpose trust known as the Canada housing trust do we need to have all of this jargon and all of this garbage? Why is this even in existence? It's unbelievable what they do. They are constantly causing a problem for every Canadian and of course that has to only snowball and get worse when a crisis unfolds. Speaking of crisis, the bail-in regime will be put into effect the next crisis Canada endures. This is talking about it and the banks that are considered to be systemically important banks, in this case here, domestic but when I refer to the GSIB or the Global Systemically Important Banks, that's a different list. Here we have the top six banks in Canada. If one of these banks starts to go under, they will actually nationalize the bank. The CDIC will take over and be able to do whatever they want. And they suggest to us in this article here, what is not eligible for bail-in conversion are deposits, including checking account savings and term deposits such as GICs, secured liabilities, for example, covered bonds, eligible financial contracts like derivatives, everyone's favorite, and most structured notes. Hey, they told us that and we should definitely believe them because they're a very trustworthy group of people, right? Well, you can ask the people in Cyprus what they said about that one. And this year, back in 2014, in Brisbane, Australia, we had the G20 meeting up and they all decided that they would all implement a bail-in regime for their particular countries. The bail-in, if you're in a G20 nation, is part of your laws. It's already been signed in and the bail-ins are coming. Now they tell us that you don't have to worry because these magical funds have been created and money is being put aside to ensure that in the event of a failure of a bank, they're gonna be able to bail it out, not with taxpayer dollars, but with secret, special, fluffy kitten, rainbow and flower money that's just sitting there and used to bail out the bank. It's absolutely absurd what they tell people like they're children and they believe it. Previously, I covered this issue and still to this day, I receive comments that I'm lying. 
the Federal Reserve bailed out Canada and nobody seems to know this. The Federal Reserve admittedly now, because the information is public, bailed out institutions all around the world, including all of the major Canadian banks. Whether they paid them back, whether that was a loan or just a handout, we have no idea. We don't know what happened afterwards, but we do know that money was given from the Federal Reserve to the Canadian banks. Why didn't the Bank of Canada bail out Canada's banks? It doesn't make any sense. It wasn't some sort of astronomical number that the Bank of Canada couldn't print up and couldn't give to the banks if they needed to. Not that I would suggest that they would ever do that as a good thing. But why would the Fed do it? Why would the Fed bail out banks in Europe? Why would the Fed bail out banks in Asia? It doesn't make any sense when you think about it, but that's what happened. The banking system is not what you think it is. There's something going on behind the scenes that we don't know. And there's derivatives behind it. There's secret meetings that are always going on. There's central banks which have no transparency. And we have constant and never-ending bail-in, bail-outs, and complex systems being built that nobody can ever ever figure out. There's the ESM in Europe. There's the EFSF that was created before it. There are new systems being built today when they quote restructure debt that literally people can't figure out. And when this topples down, it's going to hurt everybody. I'm trying to warn people today simply by showing you the data that's here and you do what you think. In my opinion, the banking system is not safe. That's my opinion. You tell me what you think. Leave a comment down below what you thought of this information. Doesn't matter where you're from. I respect all your opinions, no matter what country you're from. I definitely want to hear from you. Please let me know. If you found the video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I really do appreciate that. And last but not least, if you want the financial education, education you were not taught in school, these two books have it all. I cover the bail-ins and the bailouts in these books. I cover issues relating to different countries, primarily US, secondarily Canada, but I get into Europe, I get into other places around the world, certainly, and I get into the history, most importantly. So no matter where you are, you're going to know how this financial system works. They add the jargon in and I take it away. That's basically what I do. I hope that you will check these books out. There's a link in the description. If you're more interested in the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.